Welcome back. Each weekend, ABC 10's Walt Gray catches up with a Cal Matters journalist about the biggest political stories of the week. Here's Walt with more. Welcome to our weekly discussion of all things current in California politics. I'm Walt Gray. Joining us this week, reporter Emily Hoven, a political expert for calmatters.org. Emily, nice to have you back. Redistricting is something that people have been talking a lot about lately. Are there some big name recognizable candidates and how is this all going to play out? Yeah, so right now, California's Independent Commission is redrawing these lines, and the maps they have right now are kind of provisional. They're, they still have to finalize them in December, but we are seeing some big names be affected. Among them is Rep. Devin Nunez, who right now is in a very Republican district, and he actually might end up being in a majority Democratic district, which could be a problem for him. On the flip side, we have Democratic Rep. Josh Harder, who is now going to find himself in a more red district. Although members of Congress don't have to live in the districts they represent that they want to generally. And so um, I think was, we're going to see a lot of this political back back and forth as they try to sort of figure out where they should go, whether they should run. And then complicating all of this is the fact that California is losing a House seat for the first time in history. And so there's one less chair to go around. Um, and that's just adding to the intensity of, of this uh, debate right now. Well, literally musical chairs. OK, uh, we have a thirty one billion dollar budget deficit of uh, budget surplus in California. Um, does that mean more stimulus checks for people? And this is an election year. Yeah, it's really it's I mean, there's just so much money flying around California. And I think for a lot of people, it's very contradictory because, you know, we're in the middle of a pandemic. M millions of people have lost their jobs, um, yet the state is rolling in what the legislative analyst predicts will likely be a thirty one billion dollar surplus. Um, and a lot of that is going to have to be used in certain ways. And one of those options is to send out more stimulus checks back to Californians because the state has this obscure rule that it basically cannot spend more per taxpayer than it, than it did in 1978. And so it has to refund that in some way, whether that's through a rebate or through slashing taxes or through giving that to schools and community colleges. And, and for the time being, California is still in a state of emergency. At what point would there be criteria allowing us to get off of that? How much longer would you say that that's going to be happening? Yeah, that's also a very interesting debate because, you know, now we're approaching two years in this pandemic and two years under which the gov governor has had almost unilateral authority to make and change different regulations. And he actually recently passed an executive order that um, basically extends certain parts of that original state of emergency through March 2022. Um, and some of it, some of it is around hospital surge capacity and out of state healthcare workers and things of that nature. But for a lot of people, it did raise the question of, you know, how long are we going to be operating under these rules and how long until things go back to normal? And I asked the governor's office about this and they said, you know, once the conditions warrant a more normal response, we'll do that. But they did not outline mm -hmm. what those conditions are. And so um, it remains unclear just how long we're going to be in this state of emergency. Cal Matters, a nonpartisan news organization explaining California policies and politics. Find their work at calmatters.org. You can also sign up for Emily's newsletter there.